Today we're making a floating desk with a full 88 key electric piano built in as well as a mobile drawer cabinet for the tiny apartment. It features undermount drawer slides and a secret bottom compartment. Boom! For this project, I decided to mix light colored wood with dark gray MDF to create some visual contrast within the space. As per usual in the tiny apartment projects, this piece of furniture will have an angled side to adapt to the space, but thankfully it wasn't too complicated to sort out. It's finally time to fill the gap between the Murphy bed and the wardrobe while getting a bit closer to the end of the tiny apartment series. There are plans available for this project that you can find in the description below in case you are interested in making your own desk with a full piano keyboard built in. So, the top and sides of the floating desk were made out of 90mm grey MDF, which is about 3 quarters of an inch. For the backer piece and the piano drawer, I used pre-finished birch plywood that I had laying around for ages. I was worried that a single board would be too weak to hold the floating desk against the wall. So I sanded off the finish on one face of each board. This way the glue sticks perfectly and creates a thick panel. Rockwood Woodworking Hardware is a longtime supporter of my channel. You'll see me using a bunch of Rockwood tools in this video, like these blue clamps and this precision miter gauge and fence. I really love their innovative tools. They are great to work with. So I'll leave a list of tools and accessories using this project linked in the description below. I need the sides of the desk to be quite thick so that the piano drawer doesn't accidentally hit the wardrobe due to the concrete wall angle. I will have two layers of MDF glued together, but I wanted the outer layer to wrap around instead of showing two material edges that were not exactly the same color and thickness. In order to accomplish that, I sneaked on a 45 degree cut and made a perfect corner transition to hide the thinner MDF piece. Here I had a chance to use my cute and tiny Japanese clamps along with the Rockler aluminum bar clamps to make sure that the miter got well clamped with no gap. Once the glue was dry I could glue the thinner board and achieve a pair of thick solid side pieces. If you're enjoying this project, hit that subscribe button because that's what keeps me here in the studio making more projects and videos. To attach the back piece to the sides, I searched for the longest wood screws I had. And by the way, I have a video on how to make the small parts break. I really love this system and it's definitely one of the most well-organized areas in my shop. I drilled holes a little bit smaller than the diameter of the screws. First I used a new and sharp drill bit to get the hole started and then swapped to a longer old bit that I have that is a bit dull. Before driving the screws I put up a clamp smashing the MDF to prevent it from cracking. I also lubed the start of the threads with some wax to make it go in a bit easier. The clamp tip is something that I've been using lately that works flawlessly. Sometimes the force applied by the impact driver and the threads themselves can split the material and the joint strength gets compromised. You could also get a pretty ugly crack that is not desirable at all. Now I can mark a few points to install some figure eight fasteners that will connect the desktop to the frame. 
These are pretty easy to install. You simply make a recess with a forcing bit and attach a screw with a head small enough that can stay flush with the fastener. Then you just pre-drill and drive screws into the tabletop and you're good to go. Here's my new dust collection in action. Here I was cutting the piano drawer side pieces. The construction could have been a lot simpler if I had more space, but there's not much I can do about that. I had a maximum depth available of 46.5 centimeters in order to guarantee the opening of the wardrobe drawers. I also wanted to use 15 inch drawer slides that I had to create room to hide the keyboard, computer and other electronic cables. This is the design that I came up with, although I could think of other possibilities that are explained in the building plans that might better switch your situation. Here's my Rockler Meyer gauge with the telescoping fans that also comes up with a handy dandy stop block to make repetitive cuts precisely and easily. I routed a groove to insert the drawer bottom right at my router table. Here's how the drawer will be put together. I used pocket hole joiner in some cases, so there aren't any visible screws in the final assembly. Whenever possible, I did use regular screws with butt joints for areas that will never be seen. I made a cutout in the back panel for easy cable management. A small round over was made along the edges to prevent the cables from being stuck or damaged. The backer piece contraption could be attached to the drawer sides and I took a measurement for the drawer bottom. I could then repeat the process of notching out the bottom panel in the middle area. The reason why I made this cutout is so that the legs have more room to fit when sitting since the desk is going to be pretty thick.
finally install the bottom panel and remove the excess material in the back corner so that the drawer slides can fit properly. This step was a little messy, but thankfully this area will never be seen. I made two support pieces to allow the drawer front to be attached to the bottom panel, but this could easily be done with a few small metal brackets if you prefer. I drilled the specific hole that these drawer slides call for. You will better understand its purpose later in the video. These components are what truly connect the drawer box to the slides. When you hear these satisfying clicks, you know that they are correctly attached and the drawer can be fully operated. I brought the keyboard for testing. So far, so good. For the drawer front, I wanted to use solid wood and something that would match well with the birch plywood furniture in the apartment. From what I had, hard maple was the best color match, so I went ahead prepping this board and bringing it to its final size. I thought about cutting the shape on the CNC, but the piece was a bit too long for the machine, so I went ahead tracing the lines and making the cutouts both with the track saw and the band saw. Since the circular saw blade leaves a round cut, I had to finish the job with a handsaw. To refine the edges, I used a Japanese saw rasp. I really enjoy using it because it removes material pretty fast and it's pretty easy to use. I clamped and attached the maple front to the small supports underneath the drawer bottom. Now, to attach the front vertically, I couldn't see many options, so I went the easy route and drilled a few more pocket holes. I know it seems pretty strange, but I had to use the impact driver to drill these holes, because all my other drillers did not fit inside the drawer with such a long drill bit attached. I just put the drawer on the floor as it seemed like the easiest and quickest way to properly clamping and driving the screws. Okay, great, now let's move on to making the drawer cabinet. So this entire project was made with materials that I already had, which I always find very satisfying because then my scrap pile gets a bit smaller. To make the cabinet carcass, I used 12mm or half inch Baltic birch plywood. It might seem a little too thin, but honestly, it did work very well, so I don't see any reason to use thicker material, mostly when birch plywood is fairly high quality and resistant. I will do again a combination of wood and grey MDF. This board was quite long and wanted to tip towards the left side of the table saw sled, so I placed some weight to keep a straight cut. I saw this trick on the Make Something channel a few times and thought it was very clever. I cut the back panel out of grey material and started joining the sides with the top. I chose dominoes or floating tenons for the joinery to speed things up a little.
I applied wood glue and clamped the pieces very tightly with my beloved bar clamps and a few quick lever clamps that are new to me. To make sure it stays square while the glue is drying, I also use some inexpensive yet super nice quality corner clamps. For the back and bottom pieces, I used pocket hole joinery again because doing it with dominoes would make things a bit too complicated for what I really wanted with this project. Here I was cutting all the wood for the drawer boxes. I was making three boxes, one of them being taller than the other two. I'm using pre-finished birch plywood again. I hate to finish the interior of drawers, so that's why I tend to use this pre-finished stuff whenever possible. The bottoms will be made out of 6mm plywood, so I just went ahead making two passes on the table saw to create a groove on all drawer sides. The back pieces need to receive two notches, again in order for the drawer slides to fit. I put these together with pocket holes since I find it quick and easy and gives me a very clean look when the false front gets installed. I could now insert the bottom panels and close the boxes with more pocket hole screws. Here you can see why the notches are needed at the back of the boxes. Also a 6mm hole needs to be drilled in order to receive a metal pin that keeps the slide in the correct position in relation to the drawer at all times. The manufacturer of the slides, Bloom, does provide all the guidance and measurements for you to install these slides, but there's a great video from Crafted Workshop that explains really well how it works. I've watched it a few times to refresh my memory and I will leave a link below in case you need it too. I installed the slides in the carcass doing my best to keep them perpendicular to the front edges. The orange components get screwed to the bottom front area of the boxes. As simple as that, they click together and are ready to be used. I can finally drive my attention to the front of the drawers. This part was more exciting for me because I got to do techniques that I don't do very often. Since the design requires a double layer of material and there is a cutout in the front gray layer, I decided to cut a template on my small laser to help with the repetitive shapes that I have to cut. The laser bed is pretty small so I couldn't cut a template with the full width of the drawer fronts. I solved the issue by tracing a center line on both the template and all the front pieces. This way I could align them perfectly. I cut the bulk of the material with my bandsaw and then moved into using the template with a flush trimming bit. To create a recess for the fingers to grab and open the drawer, I used the cove bit. I 
I glue the layers together to form each final drawer front and install them leaving a consistent gap all around for better looks. This cabinet is meant to be mobile. It will run on casters, but something that was bugging me was the wasted space between the casters. You know that I'm all about using every possible space for storage and the tiny apartment builds are a true testimony to that. So I decided to use the Toki carry of the cabinet to add a little secret drawer. I made it super quickly and cheaply with more scraps of plywood. I basically made a box within a box with a little wiggle room. No slides were needed. I can now add the toe kick that serves as a drawer front that is supposed to be a secret. I guess I run it by keeping it on this video. Oops. The project is complete. Now I can move into sanding and finishing. I spot treated to tiny knots with CA glue and activator to level up the surface. I wanted to get the most out of both worlds and have a deep grey, almost black MDF as well as a light colored birch plywood to match the rest of the apartment. So I masked the areas that I didn't want to hit with the oil based finish that gives a darker tone. I went ahead by first applying the water based varnish to all the plywood faces and edges. After two layers of varnish with sanding in between, I removed the tape and went ahead spreading the hard wax oil finish. If you do the water-based varnish application first, as I did, it will restrain the oil finish to the naked areas. Doing it the other way around might not work properly because oils tend to be absorbed into the material, thus spreading to unwanted areas even below the masking tape. Yay, the final installation started and I couldn't be happier to complete this wall like a missing piece in a puzzle. As you can see I had to remove the tabletop from the frame because of the acute angle at the right side. I leveled up the frame and checked the fit of the tabletop. Everything was looking good so I transferred the whole placement to the concrete wall and drilled the holes for the bushings. The floating desk was anchored to the wall with five leg bolts. I proceeded with the installation of the drawer slides and the big drawer. I think it is starting to look very very cool. I was however a bit concerned about it tipping slightly towards the front and eventually blocking the cubby door below it. To avoid that I came up with a simple solution. I cut a little piece of steel that is thinner than the door gap and drilled two current holes. 
This will support the weight of the desk by being attached to the edge of the fixed front. This way it will be out of sight and if someday I need to disassemble this desk, there won't be any visible defects on the wardrobe faces. I totally forgot about the hole to drive the electric cables through, so I made it at this point. Here's a shot of the cables that will leave behind the keyboard and that will feed energy to the laptop, wireless charger and possibly a future lamp. With all this mess out of the way, I can have a single wide cable connecting to the wall outlet for a clean look. And the project is done. I still can't believe that this area of the apartment is complete and I don't have to think about it any longer. I can enjoy a little more organization and learn or create more music anytime I want. I think the desk came out really awesome, pretty much like I envisioned it. The mobile cabinet moves super smoothly, I love the hidden drawer at the bottom too. The extra thickness of the desk sides gave me enough room to fully open the piano drawer. I made two little caps to hide the ugly pocket holes that are simply stuck with double-sided tape. The entire area is fully operational, even with the annoying angles of the wall. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this project and I hope you get inspired to make something in your shop or apartment. Make sure to subscribe if you want to keep seeing more videos like this. I've been out of business for a few months because I was basically forced to rest my body and mind, but I have many more projects scheduled for this year that I'd love to have your feedback on. A huge thanks to Rockler for sponsoring this project as well as to all my Patreon members that hold my back during the past months. If you want to support my work, head over to patreon.com slash gethandstory or visit my online shop and grab a t-shirt or a notebook. Thanks everyone for watching and go get your hands dirty. Até já.